Hello, my fellow Light Today Scenes, Kenzie Red Show here, and at long last, after eight months since the game released and four weeks of streaming, I managed to get the Platinum Trophy for Kingdom Hearts 3. But is the game all it's cracked up to be, or is it a disappointing end to this chapter of the long running series? Let's find out as I review Kingdom Hearts 3. So here we go. Um Usual carryouts. It's it's been a while since I've done a game review, uh, but unlike my film reviews, my game reviews are gonna go into spoiler territory. So if you've still somehow not played this game yet, spoiler alert is now in effect. So as always, we are going to kick off with the. Story, and it's the culmination of 17 years of storytelling uh, talking about the Keyblade War and the Keyblade or X-Blade being split into 7 pieces of light and 13 pieces of darkness. Now, 7 pure lights is what... Um, has been uh, talked about throughout uh, the series since it started back in 2002. And the 13 Pieces of Darkness are, for long-time fans, of course, the Organization 13. And it is overall a great story. And then you've got a small subplot that has Maleficent and Pete once again together uh, trying to find a black box. Box. Now, what that black box is going to, what that black box means, uh, we don't know. Uh, but it could be something that ties into the next main Kingdom Hearts game, which won't be anytime soon. But hopefully, we have more Kingdom Hearts games to keep us busy in the meantime. The other part of the story, it involves Sora finding the seven pure, the, the new seven pure lights, because in the first game, you had Belle, Ariel, Cinderella, Snow White. Uh, who are the other ones? Mulan wasn't until Mulan wasn't until Kingdom Hearts two. Who? Uh, Alice, Alice in Wonderland. Um, and Jasmine, Jasmine from Aladdin. So Belle, Ariel, Snow White, Cinderella, Jasmine, and Alice from Alice in Wonderland. And then, of course, one of Sora's best friends, Kyrie. But on this occasion, we have seven new Guardians of Light. And these turn out to be the team of Sora, Roxas, Ventus, Shion, Kairi, Riku, and Lee. Now, those that are new to the series are thinking to yourselves, wait a minute, Lee? Who's Lee? Well, his counterpart is Axel, my favourite member of the Organisation 13. Lee turns his back on the Organisation to fight with Sora and reunite with Roxas and Shion. 
the and the worlds that they explore in their the worlds that Sora, Donald, and Goofy explore to try and recruit these seven guardians of light. Um, we start off in Olympus, the world for Hercules, of course. Then they have the toy box, which is Toy Story, one of the new worlds on top of Monst as a, a majority of these worlds are brand new. We have Twilight Town returning. And then you've got a great mini game in there that involves you collecting ingredients, which I'll go into the collectibles shortly. Um, collectibles, getting all the ingredients to cook at uh, Le Grand Bistro run by Little Chef, which is what they call them for some reason. Uh, his real name is actually Remy from Ratatouille. And uh, the bistro is run by none other than Scrooge freaking McDuck. Another money-making scheme. But hey, if you manage to do well in creating the dishes, then there you go. Uh, other collectibles include the Lucky Emblems, which are basically the Mickey Mouse shaped logo that you see that, uh, I mean, I mean, kids that grew up in the 90s, that, that Mickey Mouse logo on your Disney video cassettes, yeah, basically that. And uh, it, it's been a fun Easter egg to find in various Disney films over the years, and now they're doing, they've done it here in Kingdom Hearts. Uh, other things you've got to find include uh, constellations when you're in your gummy ship, which you can upgrade to incredibly ridiculous levels of over overpoweredness, as I can attest to. It's a shame I might. It's a shame I won't be able to get the gameplay footage yet, uh, because um, because with over with uh, four weeks worth of streams, it would take me forever to find the footage that I'm after. Um, and then you've also got other. Uh, photo challenges which you unlock throughout the game as well. Um, I'll just get... Um, I'll just get the worlds up. Um, ah, yes, here we are. Right. The worlds are... Um, we start at Olympus with uh, Hercules, then you've got Twilight Town, uh, and then we've got the Hundred Acre Wood returning for your uh, traditional mini games section in the game. Uh, next, we've got uh, the toy box from Toy Story, and uh, the Kingdom of Corona from Tangled. And then on to the next galaxy, where you've got where you've got uh, Monstropolis from Monsters Inc., the Caribbean from Pirates of the Caribbean. It's great to see the Pirates of the Caribbean back. Uh, then we have got San Francisco from Big Hero Six, and last but by no means least, I said it in my streams, and I'll say it again: the most overrated Disney film right now. Arendelle from Frozen. And yes, they went through all the... Yes, they even went through with getting not one, but two songs in the world. And yes, it's the two that you're... And one of them is exactly what you are thinking of. The other one, I was just like, seriously? You managed to get two songs in this? I came here to play Kingdom Hearts... Not watch Frozen all over again. Because, let's face it, it's a great film, but it's ruined because they built it around one song. And it is the song that you are thinking of, ladies and gentlemen. And then, of course, it all climaxes at the Keyblade Graveyard.
But that's not where the true climax is. The true climax, once this decides to load, Well, since my laptop is being ridiculously slow to load, I'm going to try and get something elsewhere instead. Um, the true finale takes place at Scala at Kylum. Which is where you fight Master Xehanort right at the end of the game. And oh boy, I was not prepared for how the world, the game was going to end. It was very emotional for me. And because I managed to, because I did a lot of grinding at the battle gates, which you actually, uh, you unlock the first battle gate in the Keyblade Graveyard. But the others, you have to wait until you actually beat the game. Which I'm a little bit disappointed about. But it does mean it gives you an excuse to get to level 99. Get all the uh, items you need, the synthesis items you need to get the Ultima Weapon. Or Ultima Keyblade as I call it. And then from there... Once you beat Master Xehanort, it turns out a younger version of himself and a younger version of Master Ericus, voiced once again by Mark Hamill, were playing a game of chess throughout the game. So I'm going to give the story here a 10 out of 10. Because I think it's a great culmination of the hard work that Disney and Square Enix have put in over the last 13 years. Because Kingdom Hearts 2 was released in 2006 in Europe and North America. Released in 2005 in Japan. So technically 14 years if you've been waiting in Japan. Then we are now going to go on to the characters and a lot of the regulars are back. Everyone from the organization 13 is back. Whew. Everyone from the organization 13 is back. All your regulars are back. The organization 13 are back. Uh, Sora, Donald, Goofy... You've got everyone from uh, the previous Kingdom Hearts games, including Hena and Pence, who were friends with Roxas in Kingdom Hearts 2, and uh, friend Sora uh, in the process as well. Um, of course, I mentioned Maleficent and Peach. You've got a lot. Uh, so all, the di all your favorite Disney characters are back, uh, and of course... The characters uh, brought to life fantastically by a lot of the, um, by a few people that, um, what's that? Uh, the, the more up-to-date uh, Disney films like uh, Frozen, Arendelle, uh, Frozen uh, Tangled and Big Hero 6, they've got the original voice cast from uh, those films. Whereas for uh, people like uh, Woody from uh, the sandbox, uh, Toy Box World, that is actually none other than Jim Hanks. I believe it's Jim Hanks. It's Tom Hanks' younger brother. And they sound so similar. I, I think they did a great job getting uh, voice actors that sounded as close to the original voice actors as possible. And overall, the characters brought to life, very well written, 
plenty of comedic moments, plenty of intense moments, uh, including a boss battle with Aqua, who has been consumed by darkness after being in the realm of darkness for too long, trying to fight back, gets struck by darkness, and uh, yeah, uh, that's one of that's one of the many moments in the game where I was getting a little frustrated. Reason for that? Because I played the game on critical mode. Probably not the best idea in the grand scheme of things because there's no trophy for completing the game on critical mode. But I figured since this is the last chapter of this current story, go big or go home, go on critical mode. And uh, yeah, confession time, I kind of died during the tutorial. Yeah, not ideal. Um... I did feel the cutscenes did drag on a little bit when I was trying to find somewhere to save, but um, apart from that, I wasn't overly concerned because it was a great experience. The characters definitely helped. Um, the characters definitely helped the um, long cutscenes um, be more bearable, and then from there, overall, just. Fantastic characters all around. I'm going to give that a 10 out of 10 as well. Visuals next. Do I really need to say more about the visuals? They are the most beautiful. It look, It's probably one of the most beautiful games I've played in recent years. Rivaled only to Ori and the Blind Forest. Let's put it this way. The visuals... When it comes to things like the the links, uh, the battle links which you use to take out the, the Heartless, Unversed and Nobodies. Yep, all three forms of Heartless are here. Technically four if we include Dream Eaters, but the Dream Eaters are not featured in battle in Kingdom Hearts 3. One of the Dream Eaters, which you can... Raise in Dream Drop Distance does feature as uh, a link called the Meow Meow Balloon. Others include the Sea Spectacle, which is aerial, uh, Eight Bit Blast, which is Wreck It Ralph. I was really hoping they were going to get a Wreck It Ralph world in Kingdom Hearts Three. Ah, uh, who knows? But we'll wait and see what happens uh, when it comes to DLC. Uh, next. Um, I think just overall the visuals in each of the worlds really capture the spirit of those various worlds that you're in. You really feel like you're part of those worlds. <laughs> well, let me reference there for the win. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's an incredible feat in uh, game development. It looks incredible, As a, especially the HDR, the high dynamic range. In, in the Olympus world as well, you're going from dark and rainy and then you just see this big burst of sunshine as you approach the gates to, Olymp to Mount Olympus and you're just like, oh my word, that looks incredible! And one of my friends kindly pointed out in the chat, that's HDR though. And I, he, I couldn't agree more. And um, like I say, overall, the visuals really do capture the magic of those Disney worlds. That is another 10 out of 10. And last but by no means least, oh my word, the soundtrack. Oh my word, the soundtrack. It is incredible. Probably the best soundtrack in the entire Kingdom Hearts series. Yeah, that's how good this game is. Reason for that, when you step into Olympus for the first time, there's, it's not the music you usually associate with the Olympus Colosseum in the previous uh, Kingdom Hearts games, but it, they've upped the scope in every way possible with the music they managed the they have the diff they managed to, to have dashes of different themes from 
the various games in the past. In particular, like I said, with Olympus, it's been a, it's been a mainstay since the start of the series back in 2002, 17 years ago. And from there, we also have incredible, and of course, like I said, I mentioned, I mentioned in the story, yes, they had Let It Go and Do You Want to Build a Snowman. Yes, they had those two songs in Frozen, and I was just, and like I mentioned earlier, I was like, seriously, you have those two scenes in this game? I came here to play Kingdom Hearts, not watch Frozen all over again. And then you've got the music for each of the battle gates. Again, hints of the music from the previous games, just fantastic. And um, some, even some updates to familiar music, like in Olympus and in Twilight Town. That, uh, but back to Olympus for a moment. Um, you really get the sense of this is going to be an epic climax to this story. And... Would you believe it, the soundtrack overall did not disappoint. Not to mention the fact that we had two incredible songs that were the themes for Kingdom Hearts 3, provided once again incredibly by Yutada Hikaru. Uh, you had Face My Fears at the start, Don't Think Twice at the end. And then of course... They also got the orchestral version of Simple and Clean, the OG theme of Kingdom Hearts, Simple and Clean. They got the orchestral version of that in here as well. I cannot fault this game. The only criticism I would have with it is that you have to wait until the post-game content to go for the Platinum. But trust me, it is worth it. I, I don't even know how many hours I spent on the game. But I got the Platinum. That is Platinum number 7 on my PlayStation profile. I'm looking forward to the DLC coming out. We'll wait and see uh, what happens with that. Uh, Platinum number 8, rest assured, will be Spider-Man. The Game of the Year edition uh, just came out uh, over the last week. So, yeah, I'm definitely looking, definitely looking forward to that. Um, this game is one I highly recommend. Get the all-in-one collection. Yes, it'll set you back about 18, 90 quid. But trust me, it is worth it. You get all 10 games in the series. Plus the movies from 358 over two days, recoded, and and uh, Union Cross back cover. Again, this is one I highly recommend. So, that is it for my review today, folks. It's my first game review in quite some time. So, which game do you want me to review next, folks? Feel free to let me know in the comments below, and uh, we'll take it from there. Hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, hit the thumbs up, and if you want to be baptized into following this channel, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Click the bell to join the Latter-day Saints notification squad so you don't miss anything I do on this channel. Make sure you turn on all notifications so you guarantee you don't miss anything. My previous video on the left, which will be one of my reactions, and on the right... My soon-to-be game reviews playlist. Until then, enjoy the rest of your day. Peace out, and as always, stay faithful.